Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. And today, we did it. We knew this day was coming. We knew it was happening fast. And um, I believe we're on the precipice of something enormous. First up, crypto giant Grayscale buys 12,320 Bitcoin in a day. That's 13x the rate of new daily supply entering market. We'll explain exactly why this is so big. And then also, I want to give us an opportunity to dream a little bit. The last couple of days, we haven't had the best news, especially with the SEC and different things that were going on. Prices were going up, but you know, it really just gives us an opportunity just to sit back and go, okay, what if? What could it actually be? This one's great. It talks about Raul Powell predicts a Bitcoin bull run will be more shocking than crypto traders imagine. And the numbers that he's talking about are truly astronomical. And we'll get into all that, but first I wanna go over what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, December 26th. It is about 10 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And I just wanna make a real quick Dan snippet video because there's just amazing things going on. So we have to talk about it. The first thing that's coming up uh, in my radar is uh, Bitcoin is almost gonna hit 26,000. I know that sounds pretty amazing because we had just talked about 25. Actually, we just talked about 20 <laughs> not too long ago. And here we are almost at 26,000. So I want to say congratulations to everybody who has held crypto and Bitcoin, which is pretty much everybody on this channel. Uh, there's been a lot of times when I know family, friends, colleagues, even loved ones have probably questioned going, why, why are you into that? It makes no sense. That is so stupid. You need to get out of that. Get into something more stable like bonds, or stocks or something. And uh, here we are today. So uh, I hope that that humble pie that you bought them for Christmas, I hope they enjoy chomping down on that. So Bitcoin here, almost going to hit 26. It's up 7% for the day, 12% for the week. That's amazing. Uh, Ethereum is also up 645, almost hit that 650. Tether, nobody cares. XRP, I will just say this on XRP. Uh, I feel for all the XRP, XRP holders because over next year it's gonna be extremely rocky uh there's just no two ways about it unless that lawsuit by the sec gets dropped and unless all the exchanges just come out and say you know what we're behind you 100 we're not going to delist anything we're not going to stop trading we're not going to we're going to go full force i do not see that happening so for all the people who put a lot of their life savings in xrp and i read all the comments and all the different things that are going on, on twitter uh, my heart goes out to you Litecoin, uh, 10%, so uh, another great one. Bitcoin Cash, I mean, everything's up. Let's just uh, say it. I mean, most things are up, we'll just say that. Except OKB, <laughs> nobody cares about OKB. 14% uh, for synthetics and so on and so forth, 12%. What I really wanna do, what the heck was this? 25%, what did I miss? Digibyte, wow, what did you buy on a tear? Also, there's a couple things I wanna point out. Uh, this graph, that's an amazing buy. Um, Trade the chain, they had called that when it was listed. It got called when it was uh, when it was breaking through and was being listed on December 18th at five in the morning, and then a couple hours later, three hours later, it was at 56 cents, so 211 percent. If you're looking for something like this for sentiment analysis, go in the description below. There's a link to check it out. 14 days, uh, no questions asked, refund if you don't like it, and then go from there. So graph good for that. And then I just want to point out one thing, and that is that this. Well, two things actually. Celsius Network is our all mouse about to bust through the $4 range. Now, we had just talked about that as being $2. Now, here we are. And Theta, one of the ones I've been talking about for the longest time, ever since Digital Dave introduced me to it over at Crazy for Cryptos. Thanks, Dave. We're in the top 20. And uh, that's pretty amazing. It was it just broke through a dollar and now it's a dollar fifty. I see massive things happening. So 20%, that's pretty good. But let's just take a look real quick if you just would have invested in the Bitcoin as compared to all other altcoins. So there's not much that would beat it. Litecoin was one of them theta yeah second one synthetics which always uh you know breaks through dash yeah man yeah, zilliqa zilliqa one that i'm definitely going to uh i'm gonna definitely get into zilliqa at some at some point i keep saying the same thing i never do it eight percent for graph and then you can just see 18 percent for digibyte wow uh there's not many that you could really beat uh bitcoin to right now is there going to be a um altcoin season yeah at some point maybe hopefully but it's not gonna be a bunch of institutional investors it'll be retail just like before maybe some hedge funds but not too much bitmax hogan at one see all these ones down here i mean you can gamble and look at it and go oh this is gonna be good but look at all the different ones that are out there that you could say oh that would have been awesome or this would have been awesome or that but you'll never know because they they pump and dump so regularly it's just impossible it's why i stay away from i like to minimize risk anyhow let's uh let's jump into what's really going on this is huge. Uh, we had always talked about if Grayscale is buying so much and PayPal is buying so much and MicroStrategy is buying so much, then Mass Mutual gets into it and then all the other institutions get into it. Why does the price not really move? It's because they were doing OTC. 
they were getting it from miners, but there was only so much to go around. I mean, supply and demand, it is in an, an inescapable fact that at some point this had to happen and here it is today. So Grayscale is the first one. Nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. And Grayscale is the one that kind of, I'm going to say kind of broke an unwritten rule and said, you know what? We know that there's a uh, daily amount out there and we're trying to like, you know, constrain ourselves to it so the price doesn't go up too much. But you know what? F it. Let's hit the alarm. Let's hit the bell. Let's just start buying like crazy and everybody else, all the other suckers can uh, just try to keep up. So this is what happened. Grayscale added 10,000 Bitcoin to its portfolio in a day. That brings the total number of Bitcoin to almost 600,000. Imagine if they could reach a million, a million out of 21 million. That is a huge amount. They are going to be uh, their own country at some point. So this is how it all broke out as far as uh, numbers. So there was 576,650 Bitcoin was on, in their possession on December 21st. That amount rose to 588,970 only 24 hours later. So 576 to 588, let me do some quick math. That's about 11,000 if my math is correct. So we're looking at a ton more in just one day. Now as before, they weren't buying that much every day, but they just said, you know what? We got to get ahead of this. Uh, PayPal is out there. They're trying to buy up as much as they can. I mean, that nut sailors is buying up like crazy and everybody else is trying to get it. We need to take uh, just step up because, you know, it's game on and uh, game face, and here we are. So Grayscale's recent purchase equates to a 13-day supply of newly mined Bitcoin. Since the number of Bitcoin being added daily, or mined daily, which adds to the supply, is only 900. So you only get 900 per day, or 21 million, which is pretty good. But 900 per day, and they're like, you know what, we need 11,000. And they just went for it, and here we are. So this, I think, is the catalyst. This is the one where the gauntlet has been dropped and they say, okay, catch us if you can. And I think now we're going to see some fireworks. The nine-figure sum Grayscale just spent to purchase Bitcoin is 10 times the average amount. The digital, <laughs> the digital asset manager was spending per week in the first quarter of the year on the flagship crypto. And it goes over some other stuff, but it's not important. What's important is what we just talked about. There's going to be a ton of buy-up they're the ones that started off this whole craze because they were trying to stick to this minimum uh, because they wanted everybody to get in so they could get all their pals in and they don't have to raise the price too much but there's only so much in supply and demand and it's the survival of the fittest let me understand in the comment section next piece let's dream i love these these little pieces by raul Powell because he's the one that really got me excited about uh bitcoin again uh, when he started to talk about it i i have always put heavy into bitcoin it's about 50 percent of my portfolio because I knew, or I thought I knew, I don't know anything. I thought that a lot of people would get into it, especially like the big institutions, because that's what they know and it's the safest and they like to, you know, hedge their bets as far as like safety. They want to go for the, for the safest thing with the most amount of returns and that's Bitcoin. Even though it's, uh, and people will say, well, it's slow and it's old. Yeah, it sure is. But you know what? People know it. So that's what, that's what's going on. Just like McDonald's. McDonald's awful. But guess what? Everybody goes there. So what do we got here? So this is in a recent interview, Powell said this. He goes, it is, I think, gigantically different talking about Bitcoin, what's going on. First, look at the acceleration of this post having versus the previous one. It's faster, which none of us expected. We were all expecting the slope to be less. So far, not true. Now it's just the early days. And he goes, and he talks about now we're now we've got institutions. This is something I never really thought about. We've got institutions. Some of them will buy and hold. But as you bring in hedge funds, you'll start bringing new supply in the market because they'll trade it. They'll trade it in big sizes. They'll be selling, buying, shorting, everything else. So not only are the big institutions here, but then the hedge funds are going to come in. They're going to trade it all over the place. I thought that would kind of be more of a volatility issue, but he says this. What that actually does is lower the volatility of Bitcoin over time. So the texture and feel of Bitcoin will be different over time the next cycle. And this was interesting. Over time, the next cycle, the returns will be significantly lower in terms of percentage returns. Let me say it again. The next cycle, not this one that we're, we're going through right now, the returns will be significantly lower in terms of percentage returns. And that only makes sense because we are the early adopters and that's where all the money really is made. Once you have that little bell curve, you know, you have the early adopters on the left-hand side, then, then you get to mass adoption right in the center and then you have all the laggards on the right side. The next one, this is when everybody comes in. 2021 is the year. 2022 is probably uh, pushing it, but uh, that's what's going to happen. So all of us right here, right now, it's going to look a lot different in a year. I will tell you that.
He says, this one, he's talking about this cycle, this bull run cycle, this parabolic bull run, I have a hunch will be bigger than anybody imagines. The structure of the market is changing. I have a feeling that this is going to be a little more shocking than people can imagine. If I just take the log chart and put regression lines on it, I don't know what he's talking about, but it's a trading thing, sure. If it gets a two center deviations overboard, which is roughly where it got to the last two peaks, that's a million bucks. So maybe it's, it's all about fractals and, and, and laying over charts. Sure, I get that. I don't need an explanation. Thanks everybody at the TA Masters. I just know that it's going to, gonna, I just know that Bitcoin's gonna go up. That's all I care about, right? I don't care how we get there. I just know it's gonna go up and I'm pretty happy about that. So the question then is, where do you think we're gonna go? Where do you think we're gonna go and in what time frame? I would love to hear everybody's price prediction in the comments below. Start with Bitcoin and then give me your second favorite coin and tell me where you think it's going and at what time. I'd love to hear it. This will be good. And that's it. And before we take off, I just want to say thanks to everybody who has contributed to the D News stake pool for Cardano. We're almost at uh, 12 and a half million and we're saturation point is at 20%, meaning we can only get to 63 million. I think we've done two weeks now and uh, we've done marvelous i have to tell you we're already minting blocks things are going in the right direction but just uh, as you know once you start to if you delegate to a new pool it could take what they call two or three epics uh, which is uh, 10 to 15 days to start to receive the rewards but then it just kind of flows from there if you are interested in contributing to the d news cardano staking pool for passive income and uh, rewards between four and six percent uh, just go into the description below. There's going to be a link. It's going to look just like this. And once you click on that link, it's going to take you to our Cardano staking pool uh, webpage, the explainer. Just click on wallets. It'll take you all the way down. And then uh, just watch this video. It's about 13 minutes. It explains how to do everything. It's, it's the, it is the easiest thing to stake with Cardano. I don't know what Ethereum was thinking when they, when they put that out. It is tough. With this one, it's like a click of a button and you're done. Super simple. And we lay it all out right here. All right. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the next one.